sharing with us this morning and in our last topic i want us to pay some attention because the next um, few weeks to months will be very crucial uh, for the country and its people uh, like i told you earlier it is the time that we're expecting the finance act of 2024 already conversations have begun on online platforms of course the bill is yet to be presented to the house uh, but it might have some monumental changes um, the country is still uh, responding to the Finance Act of 2023 that came with uh, quite a bit of change. And uh, as Alex tells us, the tax collection is not as what had been anticipated <coughs> in the targets that were set. But Alex, help us walk that journey um, to June 30th of 2024 that Kenyans need to think about. Well, um, we, we're expecting that the Finance Bill uh, will be made public perhaps um, today or up to next week, between today and next week, so that at least we have a draft. Um, Parliament is on recess, and I don't know what the plan is in terms of perhaps calling them back and at least having uh, the first reading and therefore that uh, bill being committed to a committee where Kenyans will be asked to give their comments on the finance bill. Um, we expect that um, by the 1st of uh, July, we have a finance act, meaning by 30th of June, Parliament ought to have considered views from the public, considered the bill, considered views from Parliament to come up now with the Finance Act uh, 2024, because the tradition is there are provisions uh, that take effect from 1st of July. So it can't go beyond 30th of June. But connected with it, of course, is also um, the budget um, and the speech, I think, that should also be coming up. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there are also comments and an invitation to the public by the CS uh, Treasury to, for Kenyans to give him comments around the budget and uh, how they should perhaps do it differently. So those two things are key, so the budget <coughs> and connected to it, of course, um, the Finance Act 2024. So I think that's the, that's the journey that we are getting shortly into. We expect a lot of um, participation, just like last year. I right. think last year we, we had a lot of people participating in the process coming up to the Act. So I hope we'll have the same this year. And it's also my hope that um, this time, and you know, speaking to Honorable Kuria and the team, um, the Departmental Committee on uh, National Planning and Finance, will actually listen to the presentations that will be given by, 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 by Kenyans in terms of what they expect to see in that Finance Act and what perhaps they do not expect to see because there could be some things that people will say, we've seen it in the bill, but we don't like it. Perhaps consider it in another way. Or there are things that have been ignored in the past for many times that perhaps should make their way into Finance Bill and finally Finance Act. So we hope that the public participation bit this mm. time will, will work better. Hmm. Yes, it will work better. Um, so you, you just said that the National Treasury invited views from Kenyans on how to draw the budget. Would you know if feedback has come and how it's being taken? Um, I'm not sure whether feedback has already been, I think the feedback has already been submitted, mm. I'm sure. I, 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 I'm not sure around the timeline that was given, but I hope feedback has already been, been given, and then we'll wait to see whether that will be taken into Ordinarily, account. knowing the process of budget making, beginning with the budget policy statement, and the ceilings that are drafted or given by um, Parliament, should you expect any much departure just because Kenyans have given views? Uh, it's expected of uh, good governance that uh, public participation will be considered. Um, whether it bears results, it's something different mm -hmm. because we've also had that, uh, and also in terms of interpretation from courts, public participation does not necessarily mean mm. that whatever you say or ask for will finally find itself in laws. It just means that you'll be given an opportunity. So um, I guess we just have to wait and see 
what results we get from that. Okay. Diana, it appears that um, in this country, Kenyans have remained perennially vigilant. Um, why that? Is it even necessary? Because you'd expect that um, when people speak in public participation fora and they're speaking to their representatives, their aspirations would actually be seen at mm -hmm. the other end of the outcome of the laws. Why this? And is there a solution to curing it? I think we have to make it, um, um, I, I, you have to give me the right English, but I don't know, precarious for you to be a people's representative because they just don't listen or they don't hear. You've don't seen, they, they don't understand. I, that feels <laughs> biblical. The, the last finance bill and the Finance Act, we broke down to the public, to the members of uh, parliament, the implications of the proposals on their constituents, on production, on agriculture. One year down the line, it is the MP saying, oh, our avocado farmers should not be taxed. You're the one who legislated. We went to court, we tried to stop housing levy. You go and connive with the executive to finally regularize an illegality. The, the current, I, am, I was hoping that um, the finance, I am, I'm still hopeful because it's not yet been tabled, that all the things that were enacted in the Finance Act of 2023 that have come to harm the economy and livelihoods will be corrected in 2024 that the VAT we imposed on petroleum and later had to introduce the fuel subsidy and we've seen what it has done, will be done fuel away stabilization, with. Stabilization, Diana. Oh, fuel, fuel stabilization is right, English right, for a subsidy. It's English <laughs> for the same thing. But anyway, we are lucky because we were colonized by people who spoke English and there are many synonyms that these people in the political class continue to use um, on us. Internal vigilance is not about to go away anytime <laughs> soon until the value system changes. This time, farmers, farmers, the government is coming for you. Farmers, we are very, very interested in, um, in how you, you, you produce. Um, we think we should pay turnover. <coughs> the farmers are being targeted in this current in, in the, in the revenue-raising measures. The second area, um, Sam, do you have a digital content account? You're, you're among those people with many followers, these people who order food <coughs> online, those businesses, the digital market. Remember, this government is concerned about the digital economy. That's also the next place for start. Where startups are, we want to go there first before we even go for the established areas. And then there's you who own cars and are on the online business, you are struggling to pay your loans, insurance, you're on third party mainly, we are coming for you for a motor car insurance because we must expand and deepen the tax base. At what cost? At what cost? That most people who are trying, they can no longer get employment, they are trying to create their own employment, will be subjected to very, very high um, taxation. But um, we continue to invest as civil society. This time we have decided any member of parliament who wants to be taken through the finance, you call us, we will go and take you through it in advance, together with a budget policy statement. I have seen it has been reduced um, by about 200 billion so far. I'm hoping that is part of the response to the feedback, uh, to the input that we, we, we give. We are never given feedback. It is one way. Mm. Public participation in this country is one way. We go, we give, then we wait to be ignored, largely. 
once in a while we are very happy when a whole paragraph is taken and um and 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 um what is it and and taken up as a recommendation but overall there is no you know like to be told you gave this recommendation but when we weighed against this particular interest and these other ones we felt this is the way to go that reasoned feedback um, we are so far from getting that. <coughs> the few times we get feedback is when we litigate. So we get feedback through submissions when government comes to defend um, itself. And I hope we will create an interest, Sam, to analyze the budget. Okay. To see what are the priorities. And if you think about it, the budget and what we are proposing to raise for this year Will there be priority to now reconstruct schools? Because the reconstruction will not happen by June. So we are sure it will overrun the next There has been a request fiscal. to NGCDF. Uh, oh, God. So and that's a maybe request. that's, and that's well a request. It is a, it, is a, it is a request to NGCDF. It's a roadside pronouncement. Yeah. Yes. A, it is not even a policy. Yeah. <laughs> And a roadside declaration against something that offends constitutional principles. So we, 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 we need to see, this is a one time, and I hope the realities of what we have faced as a country will inform the finalization of the budget policy statement, the priorities therein. <clears throat> Again, we move to next year still at 70% and above, with or without the euro bond, 70% debt servicing. Okay. Who said that we must continue right. at that, that particular level? So we need to balance the coverage for both expenditure and revenue raising. But for now, can we announce that Kenyans, it will get more painful? Just, you, know, you know, Diana, you refer to the Bible, and I want to refer to <laughs> Matthew 13. 13. <laughs> this is why I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. I, I, I don't know why the two of you came up with that. But, uh, <laughs> no, no, no. But, you know, you're, so, quote, you're quoting the Bible, you're talking about democracy. I mean, those are two different things in my view. Um, no, we are in a theocracy. Yeah, the, no, the, theocracy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Carry on, Musa. My, my issue, uh, just, yeah, the, just three, 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 three quick points. One on the point that Diana and Alex have made in terms of uh, public participation. I think it's very, we, we, we need to entrench uh, some serious democratic principles as far as engagement with the public is concerned. Mm -hmm. As Diana says, you cannot, it cannot be one-way traffic. Uh, there's no feedback, there's no conversation, uh, which is supposed to be uh, one way. We need to get to here uh, after the um, uh, members of public make uh, their recommendation or make their contributions, we must hear that way, how they are weighted. You cannot just say, oh, uh, because the court interprets this. And, and, and sometimes I think we need an <coughs> activist uh, uh, judiciary. You, know, you can't say, you can, I think it's very lazy, uh, basically just to interpret feedback as one way and say, this, um, the public give us their views, but we don't have to abide by it. I think that's totally a contradiction of uh, the principles of democracy, mm -hmm. and even why the government exists in the first place. They have to listen. If they create an avenue, the constitution creates, creates an avenue for the public to be able to uh, respond to an issue, the issues must be aggregated. <coughs> they must be weighted. And because there are reason, there's reason in terms of the final decision, that needs to be communica communicated. Not, not that it has to come through submissions in, in court when they are being obligated to do that. It should come just out of natural discourse of a conversation right. with your people. The second point is the parliamentarians. Uh, that, I mean, uh, have we not been seeing these iconic photos of every time we're discussing budgetary and finance matters in parliament, that's when you see sleeping, people sleeping in parliament. These are the same guys that you are supposed to expect to be responsive to these uh, finance bills. That's the reason why, Diana, uh, they are coming to you by one year down the line and saying our avocado, our avocado farmers are being taxed, or we have these issues, which I don't know when they passed. So there's again another big problem in terms of those people who sit in that decision-making uh, platform. And then lastly, my understanding of the principle of taxation 
if you look at most of the developed world, uh, the developed countries, some of them are very heavily taxed. Mm. <clears throat> but what is the value of the taxation? The services that people get. So uh, the big story about why governments tax uh, their own citizens is to support a framework that is supposed to ensure that people uh, lead the lives they, 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 they aspired for. We create platforms, we create opportunities for people to be able to live the kind of life they wanted. Uh, and, and we are all aspiring to be happy people. We are all aspiring to be successful people. That is a supporting uh, principle, the, the principle that's supposed to be supported by a government. Right. So they can get as much money as they want so long as they provide the services. The problem is that we keep expanding this basis, the tax base, but when it comes to value for money propositions, then they start failing. And that's the reason why we're discussing issues about the response to the floods, the response to why we are not having some of the agencies like IBC on, on, in place. We waste too much money. There's so much waste. We're not even talking about corruption, just the waste in terms of the things that we have to do right. in the attempt to deliver to the people. That's a major problem with our taxation system. And that's where I think we go south when it comes to issues. Do you want to be taxed? Do you want to run away from the government when, when you see Kanjo, do you disappear mm. uh, from the market? I mean, we run away because we, they're not responding to our issues. Okay. So basically, we need to understand that framework so that it can be able to address what that need, people need, and then come up with the requisite frameworks for engagement with the public. Franklin, you have to give us the final word yeah. on where we go from here, because I mean, in, in those less than two months, some of these decisions will be made. Um, public participation will be held, maybe it will be listened to, maybe it will be ignored, maybe it will be over explained or whatever the, the situation that may be. Yeah. So what is that that we must do as a people? Yep. I think some, if you look at the 20, 10 consider that we bestowed ourselves. If there is one or two popular words that are used severally and variously, is public participation. Mm -hmm. and, and there must be a reason. And, and we must give meaning to public participation. Um, if, if, even if my colleagues in the civil society sector um, are adequately ignored by my political party <laughs> clients, uh, they, 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 the lessons from what Alex is telling us about uh, the impacts and the consequences of right. uh, the, uh, t the legislation we had for 2023-2024 uh, uh, should actually be provide learning and feedback, <laughs> you know, for the government itself. Uh, because if, if we continue working that uh, route, then we are shooting ourselves on the foot. And it's Kenyans are not resistant of paying taxes. I, I hear continuously what Kenyans are demanding of is accountability. When we are paying uh, the social health insurance fund and, and, and my tax or, or to that contribution is going to rise by 10,000 shillings, mm -hmm. should I still, you know, have the black tax, uh, you know, where I have again to support uh, myself and, and our siblings for, for their medical needs. I think there is no correlation between the heavy lifting that we are doing in terms of tax payment and uh, the service delivery that we are receiving. And I think at some point we must have an honest conversation in this country that we are looking at raising resources to pay debt. And, and, and it has happened elsewhere. I think it's, uh, it should be South or North Korea. Uh, where government was so much in debt and the system came up quickly and said, look, we have to pay this debt. And, and some of this looks like a punitive way of us contributing to that. And we must, if that is the case, we must have an honest conversation on how this should be sorted. Right. Uh, and, and that is very, very key. Accountability and learning from our own uh, mistakes. And this government has had that. And, and we need to look at that conversation. I think uh, two things that, uh, one thing that is impressing me about uh, there are still proposals and we haven't seen uh, the published bill yet, but I think the issue of taxing the family trusts, areas that we, we Kenyans suspect that uh, these very wealthy uh, big families with very controversial, uh, you know, acquired uh, wealth um, hide there they, and run away from taxation. I think that looks like a good recommendation to tax a subject family trust to tax and then makes that everyone is contributing. Mm. Um, the motor vehicle tax, uh, I have seen it, it started at 5%, that's some discussion, it's now at 1%. They're looking at uh, doing it through the insurance. Um, but my point is, let's 
put meaning to public participation and Kenyans want particularly a conversation about the accountability of the people in charge of our taxes. Like death, we must pay taxes. <laughs> and, and but so accountability maybe, is important. And maybe just okay. in, a, in, a, in 30 seconds. So first, on the budget thing, we have until uh, 13th of May, which is Monday next week, to provide proposals to the CS. I've just sent you the notice that was sent out. Right. And proposals are being given through budget statement at treasury.go.ke and budget statement at gmail.com. So that's where the comments are going to. In terms of public participation, just one point. We have the public participation bill, which is still pending in parliament. I think it's it's good time we fast track that. And then to, of course, to the finance bill, which is already in circulation before we get the official one. We'll wait to see what comes out as the official copy. But there are things that we already see there that were in the medium term revenue strategy of the government. Mm -hmm. So even as we call it a document that is not public, it's there's a backlog, tight. There's, yeah. there's some, for example, there's the Data Protection Act, which is being amended to ensure that revenue officers get a lot of information to tax us. There is the motor vehicle tax, which was already in the medium term revenue uh, document. Then there's the withholding tax on uh, goods supplied to, the pub, uh, to public entities, which was already in, in, in the MTRS. So we expect such things to continue until, until we have the official bill uh, mm -hmm. published. But uh, to all of us to just publicly participate once it is out all right. and the parliament listens to us. All right, um, I have to leave it at that. Um, there is so much to pay attention to. Uh, one can only pray that uh, at least you guys don't get tired because it can be interesting <laughs> um, to keep track of um, the many developments in a country that also has to move from crisis to crisis and a lot of explanations in the political space. Alex Kanyi is from CDHK, uh, Mule Musawi is from ELOG, Diana Gishengo is from TASA, and uh, Franklin Mukwanja is from as the Centre for Multi-Party Democracy. Uh, my name is Sam Gituku. I'm from Citizen TV. See you again some other time. Bye for now.